Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. The very first lecture in this topic. So let's ask what actually is the hydrosphere? Let's talk about the basics. The hydrosphere, well, it refers to the liquid water component of the Earth. So that includes oceans, lakes, ponds, uh, streams and groundwater, and of course clouds and other things like that. So anything to do with water. Water covers most of the surface of the Earth. Uh, it's a very unusual situation to have a planet covered in liquid because liquids themselves are not that common. Things are either solids or gas. Uh, so water, the hydrosphere is about water. Life depends critically on water and that's why it's important for us. And uh, the processes of life occur in water and mediated by water, sometimes even controlled by water. Uh, indeed, living organisms are themselves largely composed of water. So we should really talk about what water is. Here's the formula for water, H2O. Uh, that's the stoichiometric formula, basic, basic information. But it really tells us nothing about what water really is. Um, so let's have a look at the different kinds of water there are. There's basically two kinds of water, uh, and we call them both natural waters. Natural waters may be either fresh, i.e. river water, or they may be salty i.e. seawater. In either case, there are dissolved ions in the water, or perhaps dissolved solids. And that's very important. It's not just pure water. Uh, but typically, those dissolved ions and materials is less than 1% uh, of the amount of the material. There's also groundwater and soil solutions, and they tend to have slightly different compositions as well because of the lack of oxygen in groundwater. So let's take a look at some data. Here are a couple of tables of data. On the left we have the composition of typical seawater and on the right we have the composition of uh, typical freshwater. Seawater tends to be quite stable in the middle of the sea. It tends to vary as you get closer to river mouths and things like that. But here's the typical composition of generic seawater. What do we expect to see? Here are some ions, the highest concentrations of ions. Well, seawater is salty, so we expect to see a lot of sodium and chloride ions. So here's sodium, and we can see here it's about 4-1 uh, mole percentage of sodium ions and 0.48 mole percentage of chlorine. So it's basically salt. Notice that there is slightly less sodium than chlorine. So what that means is there must be other positive ions in the solution. And if we look and see what else is in the seawater, we have magnesium 2 plus at 10 times less concentration. And then we have some calcium 2 plus and much less potassium and strontium. So basically that's it. Uh, sodium and magnesium in the seawater. And for the negative ions, the next highest after chlorine is sulfate. Sulfate. And then about 10 times, uh, and the sulfate is about uh, 20 times less than the chlorine concentration. And then 10 times less than that, again, is the bicarbonate ion. Very important ion for seawater. Uh, it's one of the equilibrium products of CO2 dissolving into water. So that's seawater. Now let's go to fresh water. And what we immediately see, if we look at the mole percentage, is, and these mole percentages have been multiplied by a factor of a thousand, is that yes, uh, we again have sodium in the fresh water, but that's no longer the most common positive ion. The most common positive ion is now calcium. Calcium was the third most abundant in the seawater and here it becomes the most abundant, uh, mostly from degradation of calcium minerals. Uh, after that we have the sodium and we have uh, potassium and then magnesium. So uh, calcium, sodium, potassium and then magnesium. 
those are the positive ions, and we look at the negative ions, we have quite a lot of bicarbonate, HCO3. So that was the third most common negative ion in seawater, and here it's the most common anionic species in fresh water. After that we have a little bit of sulphate again, um, and some silicate and borate ions. So it's basically calcium, uh, sodium, and bicarbonate, and well, all of these quantities here don't add up to one. So what's the rest of it? Well, the, the rest of the mole percentage is actually water. It's actually 55 molar. Uh, and those are the main qualities of the two different types of water. Fresh water tends to be a little bit more variable than seawater uh, because it's influenced by local geological kinds of uh, materials in, in the vicinity, whereas fresh, uh, whereas seawater uh, is a large quantity of it is is much more stable. It's it's been stable for millions of years. So let's look at fresh water first. Fresh water, uh, the ions in the fresh water uh, varies, as I've said. But where does all this calcium come from? Uh, actually, mainly from the degradation of calcium carbonate and sodium uh, aluminosilicates reacting with dissolved CO2. So let's look at the first reaction. We have calcium carbonate uh, reacting with H2CO3. This is actually just dissolved CO2. H2CO3 is H2O attached to a CO2 molecule. CO2 plus H2O gives you H2CO3. And that's in equilibrium with H2CO3 molecule. So that H2CO3 molecule reacts with the calcium carbonate uh, to form calcium 2 plus. And likewise, the sodium aluminosilicate uh, reacts with the same acid, the weak acid, to form sodium ions and silicate ions. Okay, so that tells us how we get the sodium, the calcium, and to a certain sake, some of the silicate materials that we saw in the previous slide. These processes are extremely important for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Um, over millions of years, high mountain ranges are worn away by the action of carbonic acid here, H2CO3, and it removes CO2. Remember, this is just dissolved CO2 from the atmosphere. If there were no mountains, we'd have a big problem with regard to CO2 uptake. So at the moment, the Himalayas are pushing upwards and they account for a very large amount of CO2 subduction into other uh, materials. The pH of fresh waters is variable between six and nine. Let's move now to seawater. Uh, as I said before, the concentration of seawater has been fairly constant for the last 500 million years, uh, mainly because it's, it, they're very large bodies of water and they're in equilibrium, so things have settled down. Uh, the commonly held explanation of why these uh, quantities are so stable is the equilibrium that has been established, which is essentially the reverse of the weathering reactions, which I've just shown you. If you imagine these reactions going into reverse or in equilibrium, that's what stabilizes the uh, ions in seawater. The pH of seawater is around 8.2. So those are the basic facts about water, which is the component of the hydrosphere.